Good morning, guys. You're joining me today at the National Running Show at the NEC in Birmingham. It's uh, rather chilly today. We're looking forward to going in, seeing the stands, and uh, really looking forward to the presentations. So, hope you enjoy the video. Please do like and subscribe. Take care. Where you're around people. I don't know whether this same thing happened to you, but you've got this plan. You stick to this plan for this huge amount of time. You go, I'm going to do this. I've tested it. Things like that. You get to the race. You see what everyone else has got, and all of a sudden you're doubting yourself completely. You're like, oh, maybe the half kilo of flapjacks I brought with me isn't the best idea, or you know, or maybe I should try these shoes, or maybe I should do something. And there's that real temptation, especially when I think that's what the social media aspect does it to as well. Like even it's really hard, I think. It's for everyone so to stick to a plan. Yeah. And stick to a plan because you are so influenced by pe by people around you and by different different races. I mean, like, what what would you say is the thing to do in order to kind of do that? Is it like being in a community or you know finding a, like you say one other person who can kind of guide you through it? Yeah, I, well, I joined the Facebook group for MDS, which was a good and a bad thing. Oh my God. But when I was filing down my toothbrush, I realised things had gone a bit too far. <laughs> no, no, when I did it, we didn't have a... Well, Facebook oh, wasn't a thing. Forum, didn't no, you? no, no, it wasn't a forum. No, they wrote notes in a news Exactly. Yeah, in a column in the time. Yeah, we, had to go to, we had to fly to Wazazats to get the, uh, to get the information in Arabic. But yeah, it's, it's, again, it's finding that community. Uh, the social media side, yeah, again, does get a bad rap, but I had people that I could ask questions about and see, oh, I tried this bit of kit. It was awful. And you look at people who have worn, you know, I, I really wanted to wear the, the trail shoes I'd run in every single race or like any single trail in the UK. I was like, well, they work for me here. And then I looked on, on Facebook and saw that people had said, oh, actually, these shoes are really good in the desert. So I knew I could. All shoes are the same. You see gaiters over the top of them. Surely. Pretty much. But again, it's that, <laughs> that thing of not having to go out and buy something new. But also knowing that I needed gaiters. That was a good thing. Yeah, it would have been an awful race otherwise, like a shoe you, uh, full of sand. You came across that, <laughs> couldn't we? Um, yeah, I think that's that's a really, really interesting point. I've been I'm a, in a lot of groups for events that I have done or I'm interested in doing, and the worst thing... Are there any children in here? Okay, there is. The worst thing is what I call the male appendage slapping that goes on in a Facebook group, which is just blokes being like, I've already got my uh, mandatory kit, it's laid out on the floor here. And you're like, mate, the race isn't for three and a half months. And they're ready, it's all laid out on the floor, and you're like, should I be getting my kit out and laying it's out? Cele it's celebrating the process, isn't it? It's celebrating, like, the purchasing of the kit is like, that is an achievement. You're like, eh, actually, it's not. Yeah, <laughs> you know, no. it's like you, you don't get extra points. You don't get to start an hour earlier because you bought all the yeah, kit. Yeah, and putting all of your food into little baggies three and a half months before means it's probably going to go off <laughs> by the time you start running. But it does, like, make you go, oh, my God, should I be doing that? Yeah. Or people are, like, putting questions in groups about gloves or about gaiters or about poles or about lip salve and you're like can you think about lip salve and you're like on amazon trying to order lip salve it's really hard just to trust yourself and the other thing is i think it's also about like focus where something like the like the mds i remember i went to like an mds training camp and uh, you know there was loads of, we had like little talks about it everyone was talking about kit everyone's talking about that and like the guy comes up and he goes well before you think about you know shaving a couple of grams i think maybe you want to lose 10 kilos first <laughs> and i'm like and, and, and do you know what but he was like right it was like that was the big gain that i could have made that was the one big thing i could have done was just by making sure that i was a, a certain weight and you know and, and that single thing you know, it doesn't have to be about the kit it might just be about getting yourself ready and it's just so much simpler than i think people make it out to be yeah. that's the that's the issue isn't it yeah yeah and no one has the golden rule right like it's such a personal thing it's about like what works for you. And the only way you can work out what works for you is to go and practice it and be like, okay, this works better than that works. Yeah, it's definitely when it, trial and error is like the biggest thing. Certainly with like nutrition, I was reading through my diary that I wrote. I don't know why I wrote a diary. The Dear first diary, year, it was literally, it was, it was my first year of running and I read it back again this week and I, it, it's, it was like two months into running and I thought I'd try a gel. What, and I won't, I won't name what brand, brand it was, but it was my first long run of probably 10 miles and uh, I, it literally says, ate this gel, immediately pooed myself. <laughs> Had to go to local train station, buried trousers in bin. <laughs> That's the start of your book. <laughs> paragraph. And then I had to phone my mum to come and bring me some shorts. <laughs> I was 28. No, it's not a great time to be phoning your mum and be like, Mum, I've done it again. It's very early, to, very good to get the support crew trained really, really early, isn't it, with the expectation. You, you can't, you can't go, go, go worse from there. 
your mum's leaving work. I've just got to go and rescue him. He's having that <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. Oh my God, that's amazing. Um, I had a similar thing happen when I first took shop blocks because I thought if one's good, two must be brilliant. However, I was running towards the Tower Bridge and there were no public toilets there and it was a big, big mistake. Um, right, questions. Has anybody got any questions for James? Anything and everything? Spike with the mic. There he is. Come on, Spike with the mic. Uh, two questions. One, uh, if you were going to design or get, uh, advise people on what steps to take to go from, say, a marathon up to Marathon de Sable, which ones, which, say, three or four events would you choose? And uh, Ali, have you thought about just dropping Twitter and not bothering? Don't do Twitter. What's that? Neither do I. <laughs> No, I do Instagram, and I, and I would not bother, but I run a business. And the other thing is, I was talking to Regan McGregor about this, if you're not in the playground, the bullies will take over the playground, so I need to be there to be like, this is absolutely awful, wind myself up, basically. But yeah, I think it's more it's important to be informed and important for me to sit there and say, this is rubbish, this is rubbish, this is rubbish, this is rubbish, in my humble opinion, than to completely back away from it. So that's that. So in terms of events that I would recommend, again, this is completely biased. Um, so I have a friend who has a, a running company that has six hour looped events. If they existed, so there's lots of others, Big Bear and a few others are doing these kind of events. When I was training for MDS, that would have been perfect. Are you talking about Rasselbock running? I am oh, indeed oh, talking about Rasselbock running. Interesting. Um, yes, and it, that, that sort of event is great, really helpful. Finding, I, I wouldn't recommend Lakeland as your first ultra. Learn from my mistakes. But if you, you did can, it with no training, nothing. It must be really easy. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> really, really not. Um, but like something that scares you. Find something that is shorter distance, maybe, but something that scares you. Because if you can prove that you can do it on that stage, you can prove you can probably do it in the desert. I think the thing to add as well is definitely try doing a multi-day of some sort. Because I think the feeling of and because it's all about pacing, not just in terms of running, but pacing in terms of you know over that period of time, and also the feeling of. You know, running for a day, going to bed, waking up, and how that feels in the morning, because it feels terrible the first time it happens, and then you actually realise it's fine. Actually, after you start running for a little bit, it all eases up, and so I think just something with a multi-day element to it, I think is really important. Well, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video of the National Running Show at the NEC in Birmingham, and uh, please do comment below the video if you've been to the running show and uh, tell me what your highlights were. I think for me the highlight was uh, Dean Karnaz's talk yesterday. Um, it was after reading his book that got me into running in the first place and uh, Gary Robbins today. Um, that was very interesting and uh, James Dunn finally but uh, anyway guys I'll leave you here and uh, please do like and subscribe. Stay safe and take care. Bye-bye.